you're living like a, a life that doesn't even seem real. It, it's uh, does it seem real to you? Um. Our new podcast is up and live on our YouTube channel, so don't forget to check it out if you want a little more Riley in our li- in your life. What? I don't know. That sounded weird. That did sound weird. The first episode is a little rocky as we're getting used to the podcast format, but it's on Gary Young and the life of Gary Young, so super interesting. Definitely check it out. Fun stuff. All right. Cool. Bye. Hi guys, it's Madison back in the blue chair for another crazy video. Welcome to my little corner on the internet where today we are covering Dan Bilzerian. I keep wanting to say Blizzarian for some reason. Anyone else? And we're talking about how Dan Bilzerian might not be as successful as he makes himself seem or might be living a lie. But before we get into it, if you enjoy deep dives and like to analyze scams and unethical business practices going on on the internet, don't forget to subscribe down below and give this video a thumbs up if you like this video. And well, let's get into it. Now, no matter who we are or how easy our life may seem, we all need a little inspiration and motivation. We all need someone or something that inspires us. Scientists look to figures like Rosalind Franklin, right? That's who everyone looks up to. Though I personally think Sally Ride is pretty cool as well. If you're a doctor, you look up to prominent figures like Patricia Bath and Rosalind Payne Epps. But there's one demographic that's often left without an inspirational figure. A group that doesn't have very many inspiring figures because this group isn't very inspirational in itself. And that's college frat boys. Poor college frat boys with no one to look up to, with no one living the life that they all dream of. If only there was a figure that could identify so seamlessly with the college frat boy mentality. A figure that would have thousands and thousands of college frat boys flock to their Instagram page to witness the gospel of douchebaggery. Well, not to worry folks, no longer will the college frat boys be left out without any sort of inspirational figure or person to draw motivation from. No, because there is an Instagram influencer and inspirational figure for solely college frat boys, and his name is Dan Bilzerian. Blizzy Boy Bachelor over here is known for his lust for life, his extravagant possessions, and self-made wealth through playing the art of poker. You know, that thing where you have to be really good at lying and bluffing in order to win? Well, what if I told you that the world is really just one big poker tournament to Blizzy Boy? And today, we're about to flush out all the lies and BS that Blizzy Boy has been feeding the general public. I don't know that much about poker, but I just had to add poker puns throughout this video. I apologize in advance. (laughs) To clarify, in this video today, we're gonna be analyzing Dan Bilzerian's life and how he actually might be a complete phony. Now, before we get into the most recent news that's come out about Dan Bilzerian and his company, Ignite, Let's talk a little bit about Blizzy Boy's past and how that's led up to what's happening right now. Bilzerian was born on December 7th, 1980 in Tampa, Florida, and was or is the son of Paul Bilzerian, who was a very wealthy and successful corporate raider on Wall Street and ended up setting up trust funds for both of his sons. Yes. Dan Bilzerian is a trust fund baby. What a true frat icon. I apologize if you are a frat boy and are offended by my comments, though if you are part of the 0.0001% of frat boys who don't idolize figures like Dan Bilzerian and Jordan Belfort, then obviously this video is not referring to you. So considering Blizzy Boy's claim to fame was his supposed success with poker, 
What's the deal with that? Let's unfold the story of Blazarian's or Bilzerian's poker career. Well, Bilzerian's main public success in poker was competing in the 2008 World Series of Poker main event, where he finished in the super impressive 180th place. In November of 2013, Bilzerian posted an unconfirmed claim that he won 10.8 million in a single night of playing poker. So you won 10.8 million in a night once. You've lost 3.6 million um, on three different occasions. How about the most you've ever won or lost? Um, I think it was like 12.8, but it was over a period of three games. And in 2014, he claimed to have won about 50 million in a single year. But he also stated he doesn't play against professionals anymore and instead plays strictly private games, aka there's no way to confirm any of what he's saying. Dan Bilzerian also discussed much of his poker playing on the Joe Rogan podcast, though once again, most of what he said is kind of just his personal account of things and can't really be confirmed. Kind of the craziness, I would say, started in... 2012 probably that's I just, like i just distinctly remember because i i won like 11 million bucks in a night and my buddy who i just given like two thousand dollars to made me a million off it because he got second in the world series of poker so i had like a 12 million dollar week so i was like fuck it i'm gonna take this dude down to like port of Arda with a bunch of chicks and we're gonna have fun bilzerian like many other public figures was thrust further into the public eye mainly through his controversies. So let's talk about those. In 2011, Blizzy Boy was sued by Toby Maguire over debt of honor winnings in a no contract poker game. I don't 100% know what that means, but that's the tea on that. In 2014, Bilzerian had a tantrum and sued the film Lone Survivor for not featuring him in the film enough. In August of 2014, he was banned from a nightclub for kicking a model in the face. Yes. Yeah. That happened. Then, in December of 2014, again, Bilzerian was sued by the adult actress Janice Griffith when he threw her off a roof into a pool for a photo shoot, but she missed the the pool and instead hit the concrete and broke her ankle. I think the weirdest comment about that entire situation was from Hustler, the magazine that they were shooting for, who said that her hitting her ankle was an act of God and not the fault of anyone else. Weird thing for a magazine to say about <laughs> someone in getting injured on set, but okay. So overall, 2014 was just a terrible year for Bilzerian or something. I really don't know what was up in 2014 with him, but it also highlights what type of person he is. So that's the background of Dan Bilzerian, but what is he up to now? You'll usually find Dan Bilzerian over on Instagram living his frat boy dreams, going on lavish vacations surrounded by beautiful women, and promoting his company that he's the founder and CEO of, Ignite. Ignite sells electronic cigarettes, CBD oils, water bottles, and vodka. It seems like Bilzerian is living the ultimate bachelor life, ultra rich and ultra successful. But what if Blizzy Boy isn't as successful as he's making himself seem? What if he's bluffing? In 2019, it came out that Ignite reportedly lost over $50 million in that year. Ignite lost most of this money due to marketing expenses and office rental expenses. Now, it's pretty normal for an emerging company or a brand new company to lose money in its first few years, but to lose 50 million? 50 million as a brand new company. 
Now that's a little overboard. Then in the summer of 2020, aka just a few weeks ago, if you're watching at the time that I post this, a lawsuit was filed against Blizzy Boy claiming that the lifestyle that he was toting was completely rented and that Bilzerian himself wasn't paying for any of it. The expensive trips, his house, his luxurious lifestyle was not being paid for by himself. So who was paying for it, you ask? Turns out, Bilzerian's company Ignite was paying for everything. Now, if you're a business owner, you know that there's certain expenses that you can categorize as business expenses or classify as. And if you're part of a large company, sometimes those companies will give you corporate credit cards. But imagine having your company pay for all of your expensive trips, luxurious lifestyle, all of that. Then imagine posting about your extravagant lifestyle, leading the public to think that you're some rich playboy, but in reality, it's all rented and it's all an illusion. According to Curtis Heffernan, Ignite's former president, Blizzy Boy's Bel Air home that costs about $2.4 million a year in rent is billed to Ignite. Heffernan claims that Bilzerian has an addiction to using company money, which is one of the reasons why Ignite lost 50 million last year. So Curtis Heffernan ended up filing a lawsuit against Dan Bilzerian. In this lawsuit, Curtis Heffernan also claims that he was fired only after looking into Blizzy Boy's finances and finding out about some tricks that Dan Bilzerian was using using to hide his personal expenses as business expenses. Another former employee claims that what Dan Bolzerian would do if he was hosting an extravagant party or paying for trips with models is he would basically just slap the Ignite logo on everything and then all of a sudden it was this marketing event that he could build to the company as like part of marketing. Heffernan's lawsuit seeks damages for wrongful termination, defamation, and Ignite's violation of California whistleblower laws. In Heffernan's lawsuit, it's reported that $843,000 in company expenses were personal in nature. For example, a $75,000 paintball field, you know, obviously a necessity for any serious business, a $65,000 for guns and Star Wars set, you know, very important for reenacting or playing out important business moves and decisions, as well as a $50,000 bed frame, custom bed frame. I paid $500 for my bed frame and still thought that was way too much. Bilzerian also charges his $200,000 per month rent for his Bel Air mansion to the company Ignite because his home is supposedly used for marketing events. Heffernan tried to get Bilzerian to get rid of the home because it was too costly, but allegedly Bilzerian's response was, I'm going to be doing some summer pool parties and will utilize the house. That's great, Dan, because I'm sure that's what everyone employed in your company was so worried about. All of the employees of your company were thinking, we lost 50 million last year and are paying 2.4 million a year for our founder's Bel Air mansion, but gosh, I do hope he's utilizing it for some awesome summer pool parties. Though, of course, Heffernan's lawsuit is only one side of the story, and according to Bilzerian, much of the allegations are false, and the reason that Heffernan was fired wasn't for raising concerns over Blizzy Boy's spending, but instead because he was using pharmaceuticals during a company meeting. Wow, Bilzerian, you are really running a tight ship over there. Losing 50 million, claiming your company president was using during a company meeting. Personally, I'm always so fascinated with stories like this one, just because so many people idolize this idea of becoming a rich and successful company CEO and look up to figures like Dan Bilzerian, who they think have done that successfully. But then in reality, all these figures that they're looking up to are really just total phonies. 
The worst part of all of this is that the company itself could be in some really serious trouble and it doesn't seem like Dan Bolzerian really cares at all. Not only did the company Ignite raise money through selling and issuing shares of its stock, but it also raised money via debt, which means that there's a lot of people who are expecting a return on their investment and are probably very pissed at the company's losses. More recently, Dan and the company Ignite exited their $200,000 a month rental in Bel Air. Supposedly, they were a couple months behind on rent, which a couple months of $200,000 is a lot. And supposedly, an even bigger payment was about to be due. So, no more summer pool parties for Blizzy Boy. Poor guy. The entire situation of Dan Bilzerian's company being in trouble might be surprising for some, but for those that know the true shady origins of Bilzerian's wealth, it doesn't really come at a surprise. If you remember, in the beginning of this video, I briefly mentioned Dan Bilzerian's father, Paul Bilzerian, who was a corporate raider on Wall Street and set up trust funds for his sons trust funds for his sons. <laughs> well, let's dive a little bit deeper into that story. When Dan Bilzerian was only 10 years old, his father Paul was convicted of nine counts of stock and tax fraud and went to prison. But Paul Bilzerian was extremely wealthy and extremely powerful, and before he went to prison, he did everything in his power to shield his wealth so that none of his money that was made illegitimately or illegally could be seized. Paul Bilzerian was ordered to pay $62 million to the government, but ended up only paying $3.4 million, keeping the rest for him and his family. Fast forward to today, Dan Bilzerian has a net worth of $150 to $199 million. And though he admits he inherited some trust funds, you know, just a little bit of trust fund, nothing too big, a small loan of a million dollars, Bilzerian insists that most of his fortune was made solely through playing poker. How did you get all your money originally? Um, so that's another common misconception. Um, and I didn't really, uh, I didn't really talk about it or, or say anything about it just because it helped me out so much in poker. Um, but everybody just thought that I was, you know, a rich trust fund idiot. Um, and then my parents gave me all my money. So that actually allowed me to get into a lot of these poker games. So how did you make your money then? Playing poker. You made it all playing poker? Yeah. Wow, that is insane. And we should believe him, right? I mean, when has he ever lied about anything? The reality is the public has rarely ever watched Dan Bilzerian play poker. According to Upswing Poker, Bilzerian has only ever won one live recorded poker event. And finishing in 180th place at the WSOP doesn't really relate to having a $150 million net worth, all from being a master poker player. But since Dan Bilzerian claims that he only plays private, cash-only games with non-professionals, it's nearly impossible to track his wealth. And I have to wonder if that's done intentionally, this is me 100% speculating, if most of his net worth was made through trust funds or illegitimate ways or is basically illegal money that his father accumulated, wouldn't you want to conceal that or find a way to make it seem like your wealth was not made through your dad doing illegal things? but actually made through your own right, kind of from a legal standpoint, so you can't get in trouble for using your father's money. If that was the case, the perfect way to conceal all that money would be through claiming you won it through private cash-only poker games that can't be tracked. Does that make sense? I don't know, just a theory I think about. On top of all of this, former professional poker player Doug Polk made an in-depth YouTube video analyzing Bilzerian's poker skills. Polk ended up determining that Bilzerian doesn't behave like a poker player that's capable of winning on a regular basis. What's up guys, Doug Polk here, and today we're going to be discussing how good is Dan Bilzerian actually at poker? All in all, while Dan did play very aggressive, 
I wouldn't say that he played all that great. In fact, there was some serious button clicking going on in this match. I think that maybe he could beat some high stakes, very soft live games, but on the internet, he's a fish in the water. Jonathan Grotenstein? probably said that wrong. Another professional poker player also agreed, stating that Dan is really just using poker as an image that he's trying to portray of himself. Considering all of this evidence, most people believe that while Bulzerian has probably made some money playing poker, the majority of his wealth was probably just inherited from his father. At the end of the day, most of us will probably never know the full story of Bilzerian or even his company Ignite, though I do think the lawsuit will be very interesting in the coming months and what information comes forward. But I think that this entire tale really paints a broader picture and speaks to this false idea of the American dream. We're made to believe that these rich and influential public figures built their wealth on their own, but in reality, only a small fraction really did. But on top of that, when you really pull back the curtain on some of these insanely wealthy individuals, time and time again, you'll find a plethora of shady business dealings, scams and schemes, and unethical business practices that have contributed to the majority of their wealth. It makes you wonder if Blizzy Boy actually has it all figured out and really life is just one giant poker game.